today in this video, we're going to talk about what can you do to increase your credit score fast? What are the things you need to do to get your credit score up? Check it out. Hi, I'm Rhonda Burgess and I'm a real estate broker and mortgage underwriter here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And my firm is Southern Living Realty Partners. Okay, first of all, let me just say this. I want to tell you all how proud I am of you. I have talked to quite a few of you all uh, over the past couple of weeks and y'all been doing your homework. I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you. You've been doing your homework. With that being said, um, I've had this question twice this week. My credit score is not where I want it to be. My credit score is not where it needs to be in order to buy. My credit score is not where it needs to be in order to get assistance, like down payment assistance or closing cost assistance. What can I do right now to get my credit score up? Okay, you know, I have, I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. I can't tell y'all. At one time, I, I, you know, I told y'all where, where I blew my credit out. Yeah, I had like a 475 credit score, uh, you know, but just through hard work and, and, and knowing what to do, praise the Lord, knock on wood, I'm up to like a 750 credit score. And I'm going to tell you the main thing you need to do to get your credit score up is add new positive credit. Add new positive credit. Look, you have already shot it. It's already shot. Your credit been shot and left for dead. OK, ain't no sense in worrying about that. Because the only way you're going to get your credit score to increase is you need to add new positive credit. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, if I got a, a 512 credit score, let me just pick a number, a random number. If I got a 512 credit score, how am I supposed to add positive credit? Remember that the credit scoring model is looking at your revolving credit your revolving credit okay so it is looking at your your credit cards that's the main thing it's looking at yes your installment loans like your car loans your student loans stuff like that they they play a part but the vast majority of your score is derived from how you're using your revolving credit so that's your visa your mastercard your american express your discover cards that's your store cards like you know like belk or jc penny or you know um you know dillard's or something like that your 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 store cards okay then um your gas cards you know you may have just a gas only card like you may have like a shell card or something like that that's just you know you can only use that card for gas or whatever that's what the scoring model is looking at and that's where you need to add the positive history from okay so what you want to want to do is you need to get new trade lines, new credit cards. And I know, I know, I know, don't come after me in the comments. Well, I, if I got a 512 score, I can't get a credit card. Then you need to go with a secured card. You need to go with a secured card. Um, there's nothing wrong with a secured card. Um, two of the cards I would suggest are Capital One has a secured card and discover also has a secured card and i know with both of those uh companies they will graduate you like if you've paid it on time and everything i know i think discover is like on the sixth or the seventh month they look to see if they can convert you from a secured card to an unsecured card and they may even send you and send your deposit back okay and i know that capital one because i've had several capital ones over the years okay and I can tell you, they do a secured card that will graduate. So what you would want to do is check into getting a secured card. It doesn't have to be a big limit. Listen, you can, you can start building credit with a $200 secured card, a $200 secured card. If it was me, and let's say I do have that 512 credit score, and I need to get this score up because I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to buy something i'm trying to buy either my first home an investment property i'm trying to buy something by the end of this year by the end of 24 i you need want to get started on it right now and so go get you a secured card i've got a link down in the description full disclosure that's my uh affiliate link for discover um 
I've been a Discover member and, and I know I'm not on the secured side, but they just up my limit another three, four thousand dollars the other week. I, I, you know, I use it. that That's what I put all my Amazons on. So, you know, that card gets used a lot. But anyway, um, get you a secured card. Let's say you start off with a $200 limit. That's what you can afford. You can do 200, you can do 500, you can do a thousand, whatever. Okay. But let's say for instance, you're, you, you start off with a $200 credit limit. That's fine. You're going to make that $200 deposit and they're going to issue you a card. Do not, do not, do not under any circumstances charge more than a hundred dollars on that card. Do, do not go over 50% utilization. I know the rule of thumb is you want to stay 30% utilization. So that would be $60. You want to be, you want your utilization to be 30% or below. Okay. So that means you, you shouldn't charge no more than $60 on that car. Go get you some gas, go to McDonald's, go through the drive through a couple of times. That's $60. Okay. And then you want to pay that balance off every month. And not on the due date, not the day before the due date. You need to be paying at least a week before the due date so that when the due date comes around, it's going to report a zero balance. That's what's going to get your score up. You know, y'all can also sign up with a, 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 the score master. I'll have the link down there. It'll show you exactly what date uh, you should pay your, your credit card on to get the most points. Um, but what you want to do is you want to use it, use it. Please do not, do not go out and incur credit pools on your credit report to get a card. Let's say you can get a, you can get it, a, an unsecured card. Wonderful. Do not waste a credit pool to get a card and then do not use it. It's not, that's not going to help you. You have got to use it. Think of it like this. You've got to show the credit scoring model that, yeah, you used to jack it up. You have a history of jacking it up, but now you, you, you are reformed. You on the straight and narrow and you not jacking it up. You've got to use the card, use it in order for it to increase your score. Now, ultimately, you know, you would want to use 10% or less of your utilization, but when you're just rebuilding, you're rebuilding, right? You want to use 30% of the car. You want them to see that you, you actually using the car and charging some stuff on there and that you're paying it off in full every month, pay it off in full. Like I said, even if you can do a $500 limit or a thousand dollar limit, since it's, you know, uh, tax return time, you may have more money to work with Then fine. Use that. That's cool. But just make sure that you don't go over 30% of your, of your total credit line. So if you have a, a $500, line don't use more than 150 okay and again pay it off pay it off early but the next month use it again and use it again and use it again you've got to keep you've got to show the credit score model that you are responsible with your credit now and the only way you can do that is by using your credit you can't just get a card and not use it the other thing that's going to help you with your score is time. The further you get away from the bad credit over here and you over here, your score will increase some. You just got to get away from the bad credit. In the meantime, in between time, while you're waiting on that old credit to age, the old bad credit to age and, and, and get further away from it, you need to be adding new positive credit. That's the way you're going to get your credit score up so that you can be able to do the things you want to do in 2024. Again, my name is Rhonda Burgess, and I am a real estate broker and mortgage underwriter here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. If you need assistance with um, get uh, with with your mortgage or you need assistance with buying or selling real estate here in the Nashville, Tennessee area, my contact information is in the description below. Thank you. And as always, have a blessed day.